uh, I'm actually uh, teaching uh, European politics in Hokkaido University in Japan. And uh, then maybe you'd ask why a, a Europeanist is treating, uh, is uh, talking about Japanese populism, maybe. And this is uh, indeed a, a part of the question I'm going to address. Uh, first, I start writing uh, before it was uh, in 2000 about uh, European populism in the uh, 1990s. And then I realized at that time uh, how much this phenomenon was apart and distinct from that in Japan. And uh, as a comparativist, I started to think how and especially why those two populism, populism is in, in plural uh, differ so much. And this is how I ended uh, to present in a research conference and publish an article on Japanese uh, populism. So in any case, uh, we all know that uh, populism as a phenomenon and as a notion in social science uh, has uh, attracted uh, greater attention in recent years. Uh, but it is also true that as we see, uh, we see a regular cycle or uh, let's say a wave of populism in modern history. And we also observe that the notion of, of populism or, or the term populism uh, was a subject of, of uh, debate among the scholars uh, for decades. Uh, for, exa for example, when one look at the uh, scientific literature on that issue, it was uh, even a topic of, of great debates uh, during the 1960s and also uh, to the 1970s. And uh, as an example, uh, there is a, a very interesting academic conference held in 1968. Uh, someone like uh, Isaiah Berlin, the famous uh, philosopher, took part in that conference. And uh, the conference is, uh, by the way, uh, reprinted in the journal, uh, in the scientific journal, Government and Opposition. And uh, this conference uh, where more than 30 academics arguing that uh, what populism is, 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 what populism is at this time, at that time or period. And uh, we are quite surprised that all sorts of uh, new political movements in this period, uh, such as Maoism in China or the Christian movement in the Islamic world were treated as a kind of populism in, in, in this era. And only by this fact, we can see that uh, populism is always a kind of, of let's say, a buzzword uh, denoting a political phenomenon that is uh, waiting to be named and to be uh, understood. And the aim of my talk today uh, is to contribute uh, to that growing literature on populism by pointing out that uh, indeed in Japan, uh, Japan has, it has its own kind of populism, uh, namely a neoliberal or a reformist type of populism, uh, mainly uh, praised by local populist politicians and uh, which again uh, much uh, differ um, with, uh, from, the, uh, from the current trend of populism and especially from the type of, of populism that experience the European counties, uh, where in Europe uh, we see as a general trend, uh, roughly uh, we could say that uh, populists in Europe, they are culturally authoritarian and economically interventionist uh, populist politician. And uh, what I want to point out uh, and analyze today is uh, why is that kind of populism, namely a culturally authoritarian and economically interventionist populism is absent in Japan and why the one in Japan is so different from the Western one uh, based uh, on a, a neo-institutional approach and not from a cultural or let's say uh, from uh, actor-based uh, uh, grid of analysis. So uh, on the second slide, uh, when talking on, on populism in Japan, it was during the Koizumi era uh, Koizumi Junichiro, who was a prime minister uh, from uh, 2000 to 2006, as uh, that the word populism has been uh, widely uh, spread, uh, not only in the media, but also in the uh, academic uh, literature. And uh, in fact, uh, Koizumi uh, is found by and very much uh, antagonistic 
died in politics. And uh, at that time, uh, he denounced his own ruling party, is a liberal democracy. The Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP, and uh, at the, when at that time uh, he tried to privatize the postal service. Uh, it was in 2005, and uh, it was at this uh, at this moment that the term became uh, literally uh, popular in Japan, and uh, at that time, uh, he was very much criticized for what he presented as a structural reform policies, uh, aiming to minimize the state intervention uh, to the market. And uh, when one looks to the uh, overseas, uh, what's happening, what was happening in the in Europe uh, in this end of, of the 1990s uh, to the year 2000, uh, we have seen indeed, uh, we have witnessed, uh, witnessed uh, Silvio Berlusconi in Italy or Nicola Sarkozy in, in France. And uh, indeed it was this type, uh, I mean, this neoliberal and reform oriented type or poppies as uh, that was as uh, a major trend. And uh, we will call this type of populism uh, led by the incumbent, and, uh, like uh, a kind of institutional populism in my, in, in my, in my word, uh, maybe uh, something that we could find uh, this model uh, starting from market such uh, in UK uh, in the 1970s. Uh, but uh, in this period of time, uh, the Japanese uh, populism was much in phase uh, with those uh, happening in other uh, democratic uh, countries. So then on the, on the contrary, and according uh, to the present case, we cannot find that kind of, of populist politician, meaning uh, those uh, reformist type of populist in major uh, democratic uh, countries. And on the contrary, what we are uh, witnessing now is the other kind of populism, like that, of course, like that of Donald Trump, or uh, let's say uh, from Marine Le Pen in France, or Matteo Salvini in Italy, and so on, and so on. And this fact leads to the uh, statement of these Japanese political watchers, uh, even the finest, uh, saying that the country, that Japan uh, has been exonerated or is immune from the worldwide uh, populist ways, wave, uh, as I'm uh, citing on this slide. But uh, when we look, uh, take a closer look uh, in Japanese politics, uh, we have indeed uh, politicians uh, denoted as uh, populist. And in, by, the, by, by, by this, we could say that populist politicians do exist in Japan. And I have a, a made a list of these politicians that meet uh, three criteria. This is, uh, by the way, based on my colleague's research and that criteria that fit uh, three uh, general definition of populism. So first, uh, they are using the discourse of good people versus a corrupt elite. Uh, second, uh, they are praising uh, most of these politicians, uh, praise uh, what they call the people in their public discourse. And the third is that they adopt this uh, kind of theatrical way of communicating, uh, which means that they are often uh, showing up on TV shows or using much as a Twitter. And uh, let me stress that uh, those criteria, those three criteria are match uh, with the general definitions on populism so far uh, made by uh, the academic literature. And uh, this literature review was uh, made by uh, Gijon and Bonikowski in 2013, uh, which is uh, quite indeed uh, illuminating on, on, on that matter. So I advise you to take a look on their paper, uh, which uh, we can access online. It is on, on Harvard University's uh, website. So uh, maybe, but uh, for those who are as a specialist of, of Japanese politics, or those who are very much aware of uh, what's happening in Japan, like uh, Klein Sensei, would ask why the name of uh, Tanaka Kakue or that of Ishihara Shintaro, uh, the former was a prime minister in the 1970s and uh, Ishihara Shintaro uh, was uh, governor of Tokyo or in the uh, year 2000. 
present. And uh, often, often in the Japanese media, they are uh, often denoted as populist. Uh, but uh, they are not uh, on that in, in, on that list. Is that uh, they just don't fit uh, this uh, criterion by the fact that as they did not uh, uh, use a new mode of political communication, uh, which was not able at uh, Tanaka Cafe's uh, period, or uh, as they don't simply uh, praise uh, what the assumed people, uh, which is the case of Ishihara Shintaro, or, uh, and uh, as the academic literature on populism uh, implies that uh, they should, uh, populist position should uh, meet uh, those uh, three criteria. And uh, related to this, I think that uh, we should pay uh, much attention that uh, populism is not so far, uh, at least in social science, uh, is that uh, the word populism is not descriptive nor analytic per se. And if we want to talk about populism, we should be uh, very much cautious about the definition uh, we would uh, attribute to, to it. So we're going to take a closer look on the uh, features of, of uh, populist, uh, po on populism uh, politics in Japan on, in recent years. So uh, one feature of these uh, populist politicians on, on, on the list, uh, except uh, for Koizumi, uh, is that they are all local political figures. Uh, we have uh, noticed the name of Koike, Koike Yuriko, who is the actual governor of Tokyo, or Hashimoto Toru, who, who was uh, and is uh, still uh, a kind of archetype of populist in my point of view. And the main aim of, of my talk here is to suggest that uh, it is for purely institutional reasons that those local figures uh, adopt uh, a kind of populist strategy, uh, which uh, represent a neoliberal kind of, of politics, such as uh, blaming uh, particular interests or uh, blaming the vested interest, uh, blaming the elites uh, represented by uh, local uh, Congress councillors, and also that they are trained trying to appeal to a larger public uh, by advocating uh, pro-business reforms and so on, so on. And this uh, political style, uh, source, uh, political style quite differs, as said, uh, from, uh, as I said before, uh, from a culturally authoritarian and economically interventionist uh, populist uh, type, and uh, which is now uh, a general feature of contemporary type of populism in other uh, countries. And if my statement, uh, that kind of uh, statement is correct, it also means that uh, we would uh, understand populism as a pure political strategy. And uh, by, by, by this, I mean that uh, they are they trying to mobilize voters and trying to maximize the vote and not uh, by ideology, whenever it is a sin ideology or sick ideology, uh, which is uh, also a part of the debate on, on what uh, populism uh, indeed is. So uh, next slide. I'm explaining here uh, on the table on the table uh, the institutional political settings in Japanese local or uh, regional politics that allows us to understand the effectiveness of that kind of, of populist uh, strategies. And uh, the main characteristics, the features, the main features here in Japanese local politics is that uh, which uh, when meaning local politics that applies as for the prefectures, uh, we count uh, 47 in Japan and cities and village, uh, they are around uh, 1,700 in Japan. And the features uh, here on, on local governing structure is that they have of what we call the dual representation system. We call this Nigen Daihyosei in Japanese. 
And uh, this is uh, this is a political system where the executives, meaning uh, the governors and the mayors uh, or of the cities, uh, are elected uh, directly from the voters. And on the other side, there are assemblies uh, where the councils have their seat and also uh, elected uh, by, by 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 the electorates. And they are both uh, elected meaning that they are both elected as a political representatives and they share uh, competencies over all sorts of public policy formulation and its implementation. And I have summarized uh, their main competencies uh, on, on this table, but what is in fact uh, important here is that their uh, competencies are mostly equal and, and uh, being set up in a check and balance system as a whole, which makes the system uh, quite unique uh, compared to, to the other developed uh, count, uh, democracies. And uh, just to remind that this is because uh, this local governing structure system was uh, implemented after the war, uh, imitating uh, the US uh, state's uh, political uh, system. So uh, when coming uh, back to my uh, initial remarks, stating that uh, why these local political figures, rational strategy will be a kind of populist one and a reform oriented one is mainly due to the fact that those executives, these local executives and the councillors are elected by two different electoral systems. So the governors and the mayors are elected in a single seat district. And on the other hand, uh, the councillors of local uh, assemblies are elected by the single uh, non-transferable board, the SNTV system, which allows uh, multiple seats to the candidates. Uh, this is generally uh, from two to 10 seats uh, as for the uh, prefectural assemblies uh, concern. And by the fact that those councils will be elected by only uh, from 20 to 30 percent of the vote of the constituency of their constituency, the rational strategy for them, for the local uh, as councils, is to rely on specific occupational interest, as it will be uh, the trade unions, uh, chamber of commerce, or farmers association. And if, on the other hand, if and if the executive trying to escape from this, uh, let's say, a traditional cleavage, it is for the active executive's office candidate very really rational to appeal to the independent voters, uh, so the electorates that are generally uh, critical to the old left right cleavage, as they have uh, generally a high level of education, high income, and uh, being a white color. Uh, which makes them uh, more or less uh, critical uh, towards a vested interest and uh, professional organization. And this trend had been uh, even uh, strengthened uh, after the 1990s, after the economic expansion had expired in Japan, and as the traditional left parties are claiming for more social security budget expenditure. And uh, on the other hand, the conservative parties claiming for a more public infrastructure expenditure, which in both ways, in both ways, increase the uh, uh, budget deficit of the uh, local entities. And this political cleavage that tend to increase the budget increase uh, would be uh, perceived by the city's uh, middle class as a fiscal pressure that they should uh, pay for it. Uh, another reason why uh, those executives candidate uh, should appeal uh, to these uh, middle class independent voters. And also during these uh, 1990s, after that the long LDP one party dominance has been interrupted in 1993, uh, in these uh, metropolitan areas, the uh, electoral support as for the LDP and as for the social party have been in decline. And uh, that uh, this kind of, of stalemate situation uh, left a uh, political space uh, for all that kind of populist uh, strategy. 
And uh, then the effort uh, of the candidate for reaching the executive office, where they are trying to maximize the vote and mobilizing the, the support of this electorate, leads them then uh, to adopt a populist strategy, criticizing the established political elite and the particular interests that they rely on. And taking an example, that kind of strategy was indeed a measure a tenet uh, for the Ishin no Kai, a uh, new party established in 2010. And uh, at that time, uh, it was led by Hashimoto Toru, then a lawyer uh, known in a TV show. And after elected as a governor of Osaka, he tried then to exclude uh, trade unions from the political process and claiming uh, for a more uh, stream uh, prefectures administration. And uh, indeed, this led to the party to organize for twice a referendum uh, to merge uh, the administration of Osaka city and that of the Osaka prefecture. Uh, but in the end, the inhabitants of Osaka declined the proposition it was in 2015. And uh, the referendum uh, was also organized this year. And as uh, Ishinokai was, has been defeated uh, by this uh, referendum by a very now uh, merge. Indeed, and uh, this uh, public strategy uh, from the local governors has been even amplified under the going uh, COVID-19 crisis. And the structure and the rules of the game stay the same uh, since in Japan, the policy domain of public health is mainly conducted uh, under the authority of local governors. And what we have seen from the uh, very beginning of the crisis was that uh, these populist governors tend to adopt uh, blame avoidance politics, uh, which consists of, uh, of blaming the central government bureaucracy uh, for being in incapable or inactive uh, to contain uh, the pandemic. So I'm reaching uh, to the conclusion to sum up. Uh, first, uh, populism still exists in Japan, but now in local politics. And the reason why is mainly for institutional reason, that is to say, uh, the executives and the assemblies members are elected by two different electoral systems. And if the executive candidate is not supported uh, by traditional political parties, which is indeed the case for most of these populist politicians, then the best rational for them is to blame the particular interests and to seek to represent what uh, that what we could, would call the general interest of the inhabitant of the uh, metropolitan area. Secondly, on the theoretical implication of my research, it tells, I think, uh, first that populism in general, uh, in, in, that populism in general could take uh, diverse forms, and we should talk on populism in plural on, and on the varieties of the home it would take and also that certain kind of populism could generate for purely strategic or institutional reason, uh, for or institutional reason, uh, which uh, I hope our Japanese case uh, has demonstrated uh, in a, a convincing way. So.